Anyway, uh, yes, there are some initiatives. One of the guys uh, who has a family member who was killed in England, he's trying various lawsuits from England. Uh, there's a, there are a number of them. Uh, Tony Zambodi, who I've mentioned a couple of times, an engineer that I've worked with in this, he is looking at very concrete evidence of blatant, actual, provable fraud on the basis of NIST in their analysis of Building 7. Here's what NIST says brought down Building 7. It was just fire. And here's column 79 towards the left side of the building as we were looking at it, towards the east side of the building. And there's a number of girders that support it laterally, each floor, okay? And here's a girder, and then there are beams that come under the floors that butt up against this girder. And NIST claims that the fires under the 13th floor, uh, in other words, the 12th floor fires heating up the girders overhead, cause these beams to expand and push this girder off its seat, had to break the connection and push it off its seat to where it would leave this column unsupported, and somehow that failure propagated down several floors, and if you leave a long enough stretch of a vertical column unsupported, it can then buckle. So they're saying that's what caused the East penthouse, the first penthouse you saw it cave in, that that's what caused that to fail. And that once you caused that to fail, it started a progression of failures that propagated across the building, and then the interior of the building sort of gutted itself out, and then all we were looking at, you see, was just this outer shell. Well, that doesn't make any sense at all, because what's going on inside clearly has some effect on what you see on the outside, okay? But in any case, that was what they're saying. Well, it turns out, number one, the seats that these girders are sitting on, NIST claimed they were 11 inches. And it turns out that they were calculating how much thermal expansion was needed to push this girder off the seat, and it would have had to move at least five and a half inches. Well, hey, that's right to the border of 11 inches, right? Five and a half times two is 11. Well, it turns out that the blueprints have now been released through Freedom of Information Act, and they're not 11 inches, they're 12 inches. Secondly, the thermal expansion that would cause this beam to expand would also cause that beam to sag. And so there's, by heating it, you increase its length, but you also cause it to sag. And so it turns out there's a certain maximum amount of push that's even possible before the sagging dominates over the pushing. It turns out it can't get there from here. You can't get this beam off its seat. Furthermore, the beam, and the girder rather, is an I-beam. It's a huge thing, but it's like a, it's a thing called a web. It's the central part of the I-beam, and there's these T-like things at the top and bottom, okay? But, and so they're saying if you get the web, the central thing off the edge of the support, then that, the, this, this part here would just flex, but that's weak by comparison. So if you get it that far, it's as good as gone. What they did not point out is in the blueprints, that I-beam had stiffeners. There was actual thick plates that were welded in that would make the entire thing so it doesn't behave like an I-beam. It, it would be able to support 10 times the, the weight that the I-beam by itself could support. Those stiffeners were left out of this model. There were pins connecting the girders to the concrete. Those were left out of the model. And there were some uh, support, there were other support structures that would keep certain things from buckling. Those were left out of the model. And so there's several items that NIST had to have eliminated in order to make their mechanism work. And so in order to say that they could predict how it could fail, they are clearly doing blatant actual fraud. They are, they are misrepresenting the data they had in front of them 
to make it look like this could have led to a failure when there's no way that uh, it could have failed on that kind of mechanism. So that could go to court. Sure. That's right. Well, that was one of the actual wording they used in the, you know, that was one of the permissible reasons for not releasing the information is if it could, if it was a, yeah. Yeah, just a second. Back here. I'm here to compromise national security, right? No, I'm here to, I'm here because I have a duty as a citizen to, you know, I'd like this country to be as great as I was taught it was when I was a kid, you know? I think the wording would jeopardize public safety. Yeah. 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 Why there wasn't some kind of emergency building codes convocation in the country to look at the buildings that can fall down from office fires? I mean, that never happened. What is your take on that community that didn't make that happen? Well, I think there's a lot of people who, way down deep, recognize that this is a bunch of baloney, and. They weren't going to go complicate their own lives by adding to the codes unless they were forced to. And nobody was pushing that to happen. And it's just sort of one of those inconsistencies. So I think, uh, I think the, buildings, the building codes were fine, but it's not consistent with their proclamation about what caused them to fail. Yeah. 